Now, there's been a great deal of debate in recent weeks about whether or not the so-called death panels are part of this health care legislation. And despite Democrats continuing to deny such a thing would exist, a government takeover of the health care system has made rationing a very real concern for many Americans. And our own Ainsley Earhart is here with a story that may have some death panel skeptics changing their minds. Ainsley. For those of you who still insist death panels don't exist, many residents in Oregon might disagree with you. About a year ago, the Portland ABC affiliate reported this story of a woman who wanted to fight for her right to live, but the government told her she couldn't, basically. Barbara Wagner, a 64-year-old cancer patient, learned in 2008 her lung cancer, which had been in remission, had returned and would probably take her life. Her doctor prescribed a drug called Tarceva, which he said would slow down the cancer's growth and prolong her life. Wagner, a former waitress and a school bus driver, was not only facing cancer now, she was divorced and she was living in low-income housing. There was no way that she could afford her medications. It was going to cost her about $4,000 a month. So she turned to the state for help. Why? Well, back in 1994, Oregon adopted a state-run health plan very similar to the public option that's being discussed at the federal level today. Wagner knew that she was covered by the Oregon Health Plan, as it had already paid thousands of dollars for her chemo and her radiation the first time around. But this time, things would be different. Shortly after submitting her request, Wagner received a disappointing response. Take a listen. That hope shattered with this letter from the Oregon Health Plan telling her we were unable to approve the cancer treatment. It will pay for comfort care, including physician aid in dying, better known as assisted suicide. Wagner told reporters, quote, it was horrible. I got a letter in the mail that basically said, if you want to take the pills, we will help you get them from a doctor and we will stand there and watch you die but we will not give you the medicine to live. Twelve years ago, Oregon passed a law, the only one of its kind here in the U.S., called the Death with Dignity Act, which allows those who are terminally ill to end their lives voluntarily with lethal medication. Apparently, it's a lot cheaper for a patient to die than it is for the state to pay for them to stay alive. The cost for the death option or those lethal medications, about 50 bucks a month. But Wagner was vehemently opposed to the assisted suicide law. She was quoted as saying, I haven't considered it, even at my lowest point. The company that makes her cancer meds, Tarceva, heard Wagner's story, and they sent her a free year-long supply of the meds. But it was not enough to save her life, unfortunately, in the end. Barbara Wagner did lose her battle to cancer last October, and her family truly believes the battle with the state added to her stress and might have sped up the process. It is a sad, real-life story. So for those of you who don't think death panels exist, talk to the Wagner family, and you might change your mind. Sean? And thanks, Ainsley. A 